Right. So welcome to day four session on one week workshop on Amazon Web Services. Myself, Castro Kiran. So in the last session, we were talking towards a service called S3. So in this particular session, we are going to look into a different service which is available in AWS that is called as EC2. So we can also call EC2 as Elastic Compute Cloud. So here we'll look after what exactly is EC2, why we need to work with EC2, and how we can work with the EC2. So these are the three things that we are going to address in this particular session. Right. So here, before understanding the concept of EC2, it is important to understand the concept of server. So those who are from computers background, they are well aware of what is a server, but just for a revision, I'm just telling that. So a server is basically a computer which is equipped with the specific type of programs, or it can also be equipped with the hardware components as well. Right? Suppose, let's say I want to work with an operating system. So if you want to work with an operating system, you need a server for that. Okay. And here, the servers will be available on two sides. One is called as a client server, which is basically connected to your network. And the other one is called as a worker server, which is basically connected to the worker environment. So we have client server for client environment, and we have worker server, which is for worker environment. We can also call these as nodes as well. Worker node and client node. Th that way also we can call. But usually when you see the uh, server room, so in any organization, we have these server rooms. So we have a specialized room or a specific room for the servers. Now, what will happen when you store the servers or when you keep the servers in a physical location? The problem comes is before actually the cloud computing came into picture, we used to maintain, I mean, every organization, every company used to maintain their own server rooms. Okay, now what will be there in the inside the server rooms? Inside the server rooms, there will be a too many number of servers will be available. Now, in order to maintain these servers, we need specialized. Not everybody can work with the servers, or not everybody can repair the servers if there are any repairs that comes in the future. So we need a specialized people who can repair the servers. Now, in order to maintain the servers, you need security for that. And in order, in order to maintain the server rooms, we need a specialized air conditioning facility also. We need a separate air conditioning facility. We need separate set of rooms, separate maintenance team, separate database team, separate security team. Like that, we need multiple teams that comes together in order to maintain these servers and server rooms as well. Now, what is the problem with this? The problem with the physical server locations or the physical server rooms is, by any chance, okay, by any chance, if the server rooms got attacked with the fire, let's say a building got attacked with a fire accident. Now, in such case, what happens? All these servers will also get attacked with the fire. Now, when the servers are attacked with the fire, whatever the data that is available in the servers, all the data will be lost. There is a chance of data loss will happen when such accidents will happen. Okay, maybe the fire accidents, maybe the earthquakes, maybe any kind of natural calamities. When these kind of things happen, there is a chance that since these are physical rooms, the server rooms might get attacked with any of these natural calamities. Then come, then came the cloud computing technology where they are telling that, or where the cloud service providers are telling that you don't need to bother about the servers which are required for your application. You don't need to bother about the servers which are required for your organization. The only thing what you have to bother is you bother about what kind of data you want to keep in the servers. The maintenance of the servers, the security, the capacity, everything we will take care. As a cloud service provider, we will take care of the entire servers. You just bother about what kind of application you want to run in a server or what kind of website you want to run in a server, what kind of data you want to keep it in a server. So then came the cloud computing with a solution which is called as a physical server. Instead of to replace the physical servers, we have got the servers which can be created in the cloud environment. Okay, we have got the servers which can be created in the cloud environment. And the servers which are being created in the cloud environment are called as instances. So when you create a server in the cloud environment, be it in the AWS cloud or VCP or Microsoft Azure, whatever you create, 
So the servers that you are going to create in the cloud environment are called as instances. So you can also call these instances as virtual machines. Let me show you that. So a server is something which is helpful in order to run our application. And this server, when you are creating in the cloud environment, is called as an instance or a virtual machine. Anything can be seen. Okay. An instance or virtual machine is a server that is created in the virtual environment or in the cloud environment. Now here, as a computer or as an EC2 instance or a server, it's basically a virtual machine which runs our workloads in the cloud. So I was mentioning about that in some time back. Suppose if you want to run our application, so we need a server for that. Now, these instances will help us to run our applications, not just the application, anything that you want to run in the cloud environment, especially in the servers, you can just create the EC2 instances in the AWS cloud and you can keep the data, whatever that is required for you. Suppose let's say you have written a program for it, you have written a code for a particular application or for a particular website. Now you want to host your application or you want to host your website. So in order to host your application or website, we can create the virtual server and in that virtual server, we can dump the data that is required in order to run our application. That is what we are going to see sometime after. So I'm not going to create any kind of website, but I'll just write a simple HTML page where I'll be showing you how to work with the servers or how to access the data that is available in the servers. Right. So this is about an EC2 instance. So instances are the servers which are being created in the cloud environment, especially in the AWS cloud environment. Now here, we have different types of instances. Okay, Basically, the instances are categorized into five different types. The first one is called as a general purpose instance. The second one is called as compute optimized instance. The third one is called as memory optimized. Then comes the accelerated computing. Then comes the storage optimized instance. So these are the five major types of instances that we have. Now you might have a question here. Why do we need five types of instances? It all depends on the type of work that you are using for. Suppose let's say you want high memory instance types or high memory servers, then you can go for memory optimized instances. Now, if you want the instances to run at a very fast, faster pace, then in that case, you need accelerated computing type of instances. Now, suppose if you want to store huge amounts of data, let's say data scientists, machine learning people or machine learning, uh, machine learning employees. So they are going to work with huge amounts of data. So in such cases, they need storage optimized based instances. That means they are going to store huge amounts of data into their servers. So based upon the requirement, we are going to create the servers. Okay. So on a large scale, we have different types of servers. And for each type, we have the classes for each server type. Okay. Suppose if you see general purpose instances, these are the categories of general purpose instances. A1, T4, G, T3, likewise, we have multiple categories. And the compute optimized always starts with C. Memory optimized always starts with R. X and Z and the storage optimized starts with either I, D and H and accelerated computing instances starts with either P, G, F and I. Okay, sometimes it's not I, it's basically I, N. Okay, so that's called as the different types of instances. So based upon the requirement, okay, based upon the requirement, we can use the specific type of servers. Okay, we can use specific type of servers. So now what we will see is I'll show you how to create an EC2 instance. Okay, I hope you are able to see the notepad. So here what we are going to do is the tasks that we are going to do in this particular session is I'll show you the first thing is we are going to create an EC2 instance. So we are going to create an EC2 instance. And after creating the instance, I what I'll do is I will keep one Apache server. Okay, there is an Apache server. I hope people are aware of that one, those who are from computer science, but people who are not aware, I'll show you how to install an Apache server into the EC2 instance. So install Apache server. So what we are going to do in this Apache server is after installing the Apache server, we will keep a simple data inside the server. Okay, keep simple data 
inside the server. And then what we will do is we will try to access the data. Okay, try to access the data inside the server. So that is what we are going to do in this particular session related to the EC2 instances. Now here, since we are all have, we are all going to use the free tier AWS accounts. We need to remember a couple of things with respect to EC2 instances. Okay, what are this? So there are three to four major points that need to be remembered. Now here, EC2 instances. Okay, whatever the EC2 instances that are being created for free tier account, you can use only for 750 hours per month. Okay, you will get to use only for 750 hours per month. So beyond 750 hours, what will happen is you will be automatically charged for that. The bill will get generated automatically to your AWS account. Okay, so I was telling you in the last session also, but for S3 service, we don't have any limitation. But whereas for EC2 service, we have the limitation that we can use only 750 hours per month. Per month, per instance, we are going to get 750 hours per month. Now remember, this is not the value for one instance. So this is the value for all the instances. Suppose let's say I have one instance. Okay, let's say I have one instance. So since I'm having only one instance, I'll be having 750 hours per month. Okay, I'll get 750 hours per month. In a month, more than 750 hours, uh, I mean less than 750 hours will be there. So you don't be charged. But let's say you have two instances. When you have two instances, what will happen is whatever this 750 hours is available, this 750 hours will get divided by two. So that means you are going to get only 325 hours per month per each instance. Okay, for each instance, you will get only 325 hours per month for each instance. Suppose, let's say you have three instances. Now for three instances means this 750 hours will be equally divided to all the three instances. Now you will get some X value, okay, some X value you'll get. So that means X hours per month for each instance. That is how the, in the number of hours will get divided based on number of instances. If you have four instances, then 750 by four, that will be the value or that will be the number of hours that will come for each instance per month. So this is something that you have to remember. Beyond the 750 hours, you will be automatically charged. The bill gets generated to your AWS account and that every month you have to pay the bill. Okay, right. So that's one thing that we have to remember. And since we are working with the free tier account, Okay, since we are working with the free tier account, we cannot access or we cannot use all types of instances. So I was mentioning there are different types of instances, but since we are working with the free tier account, we cannot create all types of instances. Okay, so here what we can do is we are going to create an instance type which is called as a t2.micro. Okay, there is an instance type which is called as t2.micro. This is especially used when you are in the practicing zone. That means when you are in the practicing AWS and DevOps, we majorly go with this type of instance only because this is available for free of cost. If you want to use this particular instance type, you don't need to pay any amount for the AWS service. Okay, that's something, the second point that need to be remembered. And the third point is EC2 service is region specific. Okay, EC2 service is region specific. Suppose S3 is not a region specific. S3 is a global service. But whereas EC2 is a region specific service. Okay, EC2 is a region specific service. What does it mean? It means we know that in AWS, we have multiple regions. Let's say I'll be taking the region as North Virginia. There is a region called North Virginia. And there is also a region called Mumbai. There is also a region called Ohio. Like this, we have multiple regions. Now, suppose, let's say you are going to create an instance. Okay, one instance you are going to create. You are going to create one instance in North Virginia region. Let me say that I'll give the name as AWS as the name for the instance. Or let me give it as instance one. Okay, I'm just creating one instance in North Virginia region. Now, whatever the instance that you have created in the North Virginia region, the same instance will not be available in any other region. That means in whichever region you are creating the resources, all those re resources related to EC2 
will be available only in that region they will not be available in any other region suppose by any chance if you go to mumbai region and if you want to access the instance one it will not be shown there so that means it's a region specific service it will not be available for all the service all the regions in whichever region you are creating the resources only in that region you will be able to access the resources suppose if you are creating a if you are creating an instance in mumbai region that means you will be able to access that particular instance only in mumbai region but remember you can create the resources in any region there is no limitation for that or in all the regions also you can create okay any region you can create and in all the regions also you can create there is no restriction to create the instances based on region you can create any region you can create the any number of instances in any region there won't be any problem with that the only problem is if it is exceeding 750 hours then the building gets generated so here what you have to remember is when you are creating the instances you should be very careful in which region you are creating the resources okay wait i here i have just mentioned only three regions but we have almost 25 regions are available i'll show you that in some time so these are the three points that are important when we are working with the ec2 service okay when we are working with the ec2 service these are the most important points that need to be considered All right so now let us do these tasks okay whatever the task that i am going to do so these ones we are going to do now All right so here i am just going to create one ec2 instance which is basically t2.micro so this is the instance type that i am going to select t2.micro is one type of instance so we can select this one and we can work with this one All right so before that let me go to my aws console i hope you are able to see the aws console and here in the search bar just the type ec2 okay just type ec2 and here if you click on ec2 you can see virtual servers in the cloud okay so just click on ec2 you will see all these details so the number of instances that are currently in the running state the number of instances that are available load balancers these are all the different concepts so don't bother about those things it's very it's too early to learn about all of them so for time being let us just focus on how to create an instance and how to connect to the instance and how to insert the data inside the instance right so here you can see there is an option called instances in the brackets running so just click on that and here you can see an option called launch instances okay there is an option called launch instances so just click on launch instances and now we are going to configure the instance type okay we are going to configure the instance type let me show you the configuration and then we'll create the instance so the first thing is we have to give the name to the instance now whenever you are giving the name to the instance you don't need to give an unique name you can give any name to your instance okay it can be a repeated name it can be a different name doesn't matter it's not a global specific so you can create the instance with any name that you want so what i'll do is i'll just give the instance as name as aws workshop instance i'll just give it as aws workshop demo so this is the name of the instance that i am given okay you can, we can give any name and the next one is selection of the operating system so for any instance we have the operating system linux operating system ubuntu operating system windows operating system mac operating system red hat operating system suse linux operating system debian operating system likewise we have multiple operating types of uh, operating system so let me do one thing in general whenever we are working in the real time scenarios we never work with the windows operating system okay and we rarely work with the mac operating system so windows and mac operating systems are the rarely used ones so the most commonly used operating system is linux operating system okay so if you want to become a devops engineer it is mandatory to learn linux without learning linux it's not possible to work with the to work as a devops engineer so linux is the prerequisite and again it's not a complex thing it's very simple thing if you just spend for 3 to 4 days of time uh, maybe 2 hours a day it will be done i mean like you will be able to learn the basic commands in the linux you may not be able to learn the linux as an at, at an administrator level but we don't need that deep level also basic level is required that's sufficient right so here i am going to select the amazon linux based instance type and here you can see the 
the AMI. This concept we are going to discuss in the next session. But for time being, what I'll do is I'll just select one AMI, which is called as Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Okay, the second one, don't select the first one if you are practicing. So I'm going to select the second one. Why I'm not selecting the first one is it is a recently released instance type. So it was released in the month of April or May, April ending or May first week it got released and it is not fully configured. Since it's not fully configured, it will not support all types of software. Okay, suppose when you want to work with the Java software or Python software, so it, it, will, it is not so compatible with that. Okay, that's why we, it is better to go with Amazon Linux to AMI for the next two, three months. By then, it, this will get updated and we can use that one. Right. So I'm just selecting Amazon Linux to AMI. Okay, AMI part, don't bother. I'll talk about that one in the next session, which is called as Amazon Machine Image. Right. So here I'm selecting the AMI as Amazon Linux to AMI. And the next thing is we are going to select the instance type. I was telling you there are different types of instances. So if you click on this drop down, you can see there are multiple types of instances that are coming. See the t2.nano, t2.micro, t2.small, t2.medium. Likewise, we have different types of instances. If you click here, you can see compare instance type. Just click on here you will be able to see the different instance types that are available. You can see there are total 581 instance types that are being currently provided by the AWS. And you can see the status of each instance type or configuration of each instance type. Suppose when we are creating t2.micro, how many CPUs are getting created? One CPU will get created. And this is the architecture of CPU, x86 or ARM processor. And the memory, you will get one GB of memory. and then you can see the network performance, which is low to moderate. Moderate. So basically, since we are working with the free tier account, this is sufficient. And likewise, you can see the different types of instances that are available. Okay. So based upon our requirement, we can select the types of instances. So currently, what I'll do is I'll just select t2.micro. Okay. You can see I'm selecting t2.micro, and you can see a tag here, which is called as a free tier eligible. That means since we are working, since our AWS account is a free tier account, you, if you use a t2.micro, you will not be charged for that. Suppose if you click on the drop down, you can see for some instances, if you see for t2.nano, are you able to see a tag called free tier eligible? No. For t2.micro, you are seeing, but for t2.nano, you are not seeing a tag. That means immediately you create the instance, you will be charged for that. And you can see the charge also. 0.0081 US dollars per hour. That's the that's the charge that you are going to pay. You might think it is very less, but when you use it, it will be charged, it will be coming very high. Like maybe two dollars, three dollars will be coming. And if you use it for more number of days, obviously it will be charged, it will be like much more high. So since we are working with the free tier account, it is always suggested to go with the T2 dot micro type instance. Right. And then the next one is we need to create a key pay. Why we need to create a key pair? Because if you want to log into the instance or if you want to connect it to the instance, you need a key pair for that instance. It's actually It actually works like a key. Okay. Suppose let's say for our windows we'll keep, I mean for our laptops we will keep the passwords. Okay, as soon as you open the laptop, you don't see the home page or you don't see directly the folders or drives. So what you'll see, I mean, if you are setting. So what you'll see, it will ask first the enter password. Similarly, if you want to enter into the EC2 instance, it is always suggested to create one key pair for that. And by using this key pair only, we will be able to log into the instance. Now you might have a question, is it mandatory to create the key pair? Yes, it is mandatory, but you can also create the instance without having any key pair. But if you, if you don't have any key pair to the instance, anybody can log into that instance. Okay, anybody can log into that instance. So that's something which is suggested. So don't create an EC2 instance without creating the key pair. So it is mandatory to create the key pair. So here, how to create a key pair? So if you can see an option here, create key new key pair. So just click on create new key pair and it is going to ask for the name. Let me give the name as AWS Workshop demo you can give any name here there is no rule that you should give only this name any key pair name that you have to give you can give 
okay and then key pair type is usually selected as rsa type and then the format of the key pair type will be using it as a dot pem these are the two types of uh, key pairs two formats you can say one is called as dot pem type and the second one is called as a dot ppk type so dot ppk we don't need to bother we can just create dot pem i'll talk about the importance of this key pair once after i launch the instance okay so once you select the dot pem file just click on create key pair once you click on create key pair what will happen is automatically the key pair got downloaded and remember this key pair you have to store it in a secure place in your laptop okay in your laptop or desktop you have to create the key pair uh, i mean you have to safely keep the key pair at a secure place okay that's the major thing okay so without selecting this key pair i mean without storing the key pair if you by if by any chance if you lose this key pair then there comes a problem i mean you cannot log into the instance yes we can still log into the instance but it's little lengthier process but anyways that will not be discussed in this workshop but remember that make sure to securely keep your key pair in one place or in any of your computer drives or any at any place that you feel secure right so i have just downloaded the key pair let it be like that i'll show you how to work with that key pair after some time and then network settings so network settings i'm not going to select anything let it be the default network settings i'm not going to do this on the last day that is on day after tomorrow i'll show you how to create your own network so here by default whenever you create an aws account it will give you one private network that's called as vpc virtual private cloud it's basically a network to work with the instance on the last day i'll be talking about how to create our own private network okay how to create our own private network but for time being let us just go with the default vpc that is available Okay, by default, AWS will give you one private network. So let us select that network only. Right. So I'm not going to change anything here. Let it be like this. And then you can see the storage details. Suppose if you want to change how much GB you are getting, 8 GB storage capacity you can you are getting. But with free tier account, you can store or you can get up to 30 GB of storage capacity. So if you want to change this one, you can just select that and you can give whatever the thing that you want. But it should be less than 30 GB only. It should not be more than that. Okay. Suppose let's say I'm just giving the configuration type as 10 GB of storage capacity. I need. So with that, we have done all kinds of configuration. And the last one that we have to do is selection of number of instances. You can see here. So how many instances you want to launch with the with this configuration? Whatever the configuration that we have selected with this configuration. How many instances if you want you want to launch? Let's say I want to launch three instances. Now what will happen as soon as I click on launch instances, three instances will get created automatically. Okay, three instances will get created automatically. So that's how you can give the number of instances at a time, but with the same configuration. It will not be with the different configuration. Whatever the operating system, whatever the AMI or whatever the instance type, key pair, all these things will be common for all these three instances. So currently we don't need many instances. I'll just go with one instance only. We just need only one instance, right? So let me give one instance and then click on launch instance. So once you click on launch instance, you can see the instance is getting created. That means we are creating a server in the virtual environment. So it has successfully initiated the launch process. Let's scroll down and click on view all instances and you can see the instance that we have created. Can you see this instance AWS workshop demo? Don't think about these ones. These are my uh, for my batch students. I mean, like as I was mentioning, like we are running one internship training for one batch. So for those students, I have created these instances and for for my personal batch, I have created this particular instance. So don't bother about these instances. So this is the instance that I was creating just now. And you can see the state of the instance, which is basically in the running state. That means you are now able to connect to the instance. Now, what is the instance type t2.micro? Okay, the instance type is t2.micro. And here you can see the status checker. Okay, 
so after some time it will take 2 to 3 minutes of time after some time you will see 2 by 2 checks passed okay you will see 2 by 2 checks passed that means you have successfully created the instance without any kind of error you should see that just if you don't see that just reload it you can see the status is like initializing after some time maybe wait for one or two minutes you will see 2 by 2 checks passed i'll show you that in some time let it come i it will i'll show you that and here you can see alarm status it's not required now so in which availability zone it has launched us hyphen east hyphen 2a in which region i have launched this instance i have launched this instance in the ohio region you can see on the top right side just next to my name account name you can see the region name so that means this particular instance whatever the instance that we have created just now this particular instance is created in the ohio region and we know that regions are again divided into availability zone in which availability zone it has created it has created in us hyphen east hyphen 2a so that's how inst instance has got created if you just reload it you will see the status check yeah can you see 2 by 2 checks passed right so that means your instance is now ready you can connect to the instance and you can work with the instance i'll show you that how to do that in some time but before that you can also see the metadata of the instance okay so you can see the launch time of the instance and you can also see the key pair type we have created this key pair type right so this is the key pair type of the instance remember this key pair type is very much important because without having this key pair it's not possible to connect to the instance okay right so now for any instance or for every instance we will get two types of ip addresses you can see here one is called as public ip address and the second one is called as a private ip address so when you use public ip address what will happen is the instance will be available for public when you use private ip address the instance will be available only for you not for everybody that's the importance of public ip and private ip again we have too much things to discuss about public ip and private ip that's too deep so that's not required at at a beginner level but when you want to uh, go with aws at a deeper level then it must and should it is important to understand what is an ip address how many types of ip addresses are there what are the classes of ip addresses all these things are important to understand but for time being let us not bother about all those things so we can see the public ip here now whenever you want to connect to the instance we always use public ip address in order to connect to the instance right in order to connect to the instance we always use public ip of the instance right so as of now what we have done we have created one ec2 instance okay we have created one ec2 instance so the next step is we are going to connect to the instance okay we are going to connect to the instance so how will you connect to the instance now in order to connect to the instance we will use a third party software which is called as moba x term okay there is this software called moba x term so you can just download this moba x term software from google directly it's just a simple software and you can install it and once you install this software by using this software we are going to connect to the instance okay then we can connect to the instance i'll show you how to do that so i have already the mobile xm software you can see this is the mobile xm tool that is available for me now by using this mobile xm tool we are going to connect to the instance so how will you connect to that so in order to connect to that i was telling that we need public ip address so just copy the public ip address okay copy the public ip before address and then go to mobile xm software in the mobile xm software on the top left side you can see an option called session if okay, you can see an option called session so just click on session okay click on session and then you can see an option called ssh which is called as secure shell okay you want to log in to the instance securely so that's why we are going to work with ssh so we have generated one key right one one public one key pair we have downloaded so that key pair we have to configure here that's called as ssh key you can see the icon also it is represented with key icon okay so what you have to do session ssh and in the ssh you can see remote host okay there is an option called remote host in the place of remote host you have to provide the 
IP address of your instance. What, what is this IP address? Public IP address, not the private one, public IP address. So in the place of remote host, you have to provide the public IP address of your instance. And then the next step is you can see an option called advanced SSH settings. Okay, click on advanced SSH settings. And here you can see an option called use a private key. The private key is nothing but we have created one key pair, right? That key pair we have to provide. Okay, that key pair we have to provide. So you can see a check, you can see a box here. Just check that box. Once you check the box, you can see a file icon here. Okay, on the right side, you can see a file icon. So just click on that file icon. And once you click on the file icon, you have to select the key pair. Whatever the key pair file that you have downloaded, select that key pair file. So I'll just repeat the statement once again. So just a minute, I'll just stop the screen sharing for a second. I just want to confirm one thing, just a second. Right, sorry, let me share the screen. Right. So here, what I'm going to do, I hope you are able to see the mobile XM software, right? So click on session. In the session, you can see SSH. Click on SSH. In the place of remote host, you have to provide the public IP of your instance, and then advanced SSH settings, use private key, and then click on the file icon, and then select the key pair file, whatever we have downloaded. Can you see the key pair file? This is the file that we have downloaded just now. Okay, so select that key pair and then click on open and now click on OK. So click on OK. Now, once you click on OK, it will ask you the login name. Okay, it will ask you for the login name. Let me show you that. So click on OK and it will see login as. Can you see? Login as. So how you want to login as? You have to provide the login ID. But what is this login ID? From where we are going to get the login ID? So usually for any Linux based instances, the login ID is EC2 hyphen user. So this is the login ID for any EC2 based instances. For Ubuntu type of instances, you have to give the login name as or login ID as Ubuntu. For Red Hat also, you can give EC2 hyphen user. But since we are working with the Linux based instances, for all Linux based instances, we can give the login ID as EC2 hyphen user. Once you give this one, just click enter. Once you click enter, you should see an EC2 logo. Can you see an EC2 logo here? Yes, that means you have successfully connected to the instance. Okay, you have successfully connected to the instance. So that's how you can log into the instance. So that's our third step, I mean, second step connected to the instance using mobile XM software, right? So once you connect to the mobile, once you connect to the EC2 instance, now what I want to do, I want to keep some data inside the instance. Okay, I want to keep the data inside the instance. It's not server, it should be called as instance. I want to keep the data inside the instance. Now, in order to keep the data inside the instance, what we have to do is we have to install an Apache server. Okay, we have to install an Apache server. I'll show you. We have simple commands to install the software. So let us install the Apache server. Okay, let us install the Apache server. So how to install that? So let us go here. So I got some message. Let me check with that. Screen is not visible. Uh, is it for everyone? Are you not able to see the screen? Let me reshare it. I have just stopped the screen sharing. Let me reshare the screen. Now, are you visible? Uh, I mean, like, is it visible? Yes, sir. It is Can somebody visible. please confirm me that? It is visible, sir. Visible. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Right. So now, what we are going to do is, in the EC2 instance, we are going to install the Apache server. Okay, we are going to install the Apache server. So let us go to the mobile XM software. By any chance, if you are unable to see the screen, please unmute until because uh, I have to go to chart box because chart box is not accessible currently. So I have to go back and again, I have to come, come after here. So if you are unable to see any screen, 
but let me know that by just unmuting yourself. Right. So let me clear the screen first here. I hope you are able to see the mobile XTERM software screen. Right. So now, in order to install the mobile XTERM software, uh, sorry, in order to install the Apache web server, what we have to do is we have to execute a couple of commands. Okay. We have to execute a couple of commands. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay. So the first command that we have to work is called as a sudo hyphen i. Okay, that's the command sudo hyphen i. So let me click enter. Now what will happen when you execute this command is you are going to become root user. So basically in EC2, we have two types of users. The first type of user is called as EC2 user and the second one is called as a root user. What is the difference between these two? The difference between these two types of users is if you are if you are in the EC2 user or if you are an EC2 user, EC2 users will not have all kinds of permissions to install the software. Whenever you want to install any software into the EC2 instances, it is mandatory to become the root user. That's a that's a rule. Okay. So without becoming the root user, you cannot install any software. Now, how will you become the root user? In order to become the root user, you have this command which is called as sudo hyphen i. So when you execute sudo hyphen i, before executing your root user, I mean, sorry, you are easy to user. After executing sudo hyphen i, you are now becoming as a root user. Okay, you are now becoming as a root user. Now, as we are the root user, we can install the software now, or we can install the Apache server. So how to install the Apache server? So in order to install the Apache server, we are just going to execute a simple command which is called as m install okay, m install httpd hyphen y. Okay, m install httpd hyphen y. Httpd means it's an Apache web server. Okay, it's an Apache server. Right. M is basically the package manager of Linux. I mean, those who are from computer science background. So you might be knowing the pack in M in Linux, we have different types of package managers. M is one such type of package manager. Right. So we are going to install the HTTPD server, basically an Apache server. Right. So once you type this command, just click enter so that the Apache server has got installed. Okay, you can see the Apache server has got installed. Now, if you want to clear the screen, Okay, if you want to clear the screen, we have a command which is called as clear, C L E A R. So just click enter and the entire screen will get clear. So on the first day, I think so, one of you uh, were asking that uh, do we need to know any topic? It's just the commands that are required. So I'm just executing a simple command. And once you become, I mean, once you practice these commands, it will be very useful and it will be very simple also. Not too complicated commands, just a simple command. So once you get into that, you will be able to learn those commands. They are very simple. Right. So now we have installed the Apache server. Okay. Now we have installed the Apache server. Now, how can we access Okay. How can we access the EC2 instance? Now, what I'm telling, I told that we are going to install the EC, we are going to install the Apache server. Yes, I have installed the Apache server, but how can we access that Apache server? Here you can see, I have installed the Apache server. That's fine. But how can we access this server? Now, in order to access this uh, Apache server, we have to make use of a public IP. Okay, we have to make use of public IP. Now, I'm in the AWS console. Just to copy the public IP address of your instance, go to new tab. Okay, go to new tab and then paste the public IP address and then click enter. Now, once you click enter, you will not be able to directly access the server. Okay, you will not be able to directly access the server. We should see Apache home page, but we will not see that. The reason is we have not configured the security group, which is called as port number. Which is called as port number. After this is called as infinite loading, and after some time, you will see this site can't be reached. Why this site can't be reached? Because in the or for the EC2 instance, we have not configured the just a second. So for the EC2 instance, we have not configured one port number. Okay, what is the port number? By default, I'm currently in the notepad. 
by default what will happen is any website okay by default any website in real time scenario also by default any website will run on port number will run on port number 80 so if you don't configure this port number 80 then you will not be able to access your instance by default you will not be having this port number 80 enabled so you have to manually enable this port number now i'll show you how to enable the port number okay how to enable this port number 80 right so i have installed the apache server now the next thing is let me do these ones All right. Right. So once after installing the Apache port number, what we are going to do is try to access it. Okay, try to access the instance and this Apache server installed. Okay, and the Apache server. So what will happen when you when you are trying to access? What happened? You can see the error message. Okay, you will see the error message. Why we are seeing the error message? Because by default any port number i mean any website will run on port number 8080 no sorry port number 80 so here we have to configure the port number 80 so how to configure the port number 80 so configure okay configure port number 80 for the instance okay configure port number 80 for the instance so where you're going to configure, you're going to configure in an option called security groups. There is this option called security groups. In the security groups, we are going to open port number 80. Once you open port number 80, then you will be able to see the Apache server home page. Let me show you that. So let us go to the AWS browser. I mean, AWS console. I'm currently in the EC2 console. Now we want to open port number 80. So how will you open? So just select that instance, check that instance, and you can see an option called security here. So can you see an option called security? So just click on security. Okay, click on security. And if you scroll down here, you can see an option called security groups. Okay, there is this option called security groups. Under this, you can see one link is available. Just click on that link. Okay, click on that link. So how will you access, how will you do the port number? modification or port number configuration just to select the instance go to security in the security you will see an option called security groups in that you will see a link just click on that link now once you click on that link you will see an option called inbound rules by default which port number will be available port number 22 okay this port number 22 it is because of this port number only we are able to connect to the instance now, if you want to access the instance or if you want to access the data that is available in the instance, we have to open port number 80. So let us do that. So go to inbound rules and you can see an option here, edit inbound rules. Okay, you can see an option, edit inbound rules. So just click on edit inbound rules and here we have to add a new rule because we want to open a port number 80. So for that, we have to add a new rule. Just click on add rule. Okay, just click on add rule and let it be a custom TCP. The type is custom TCP. Let it be like that only. And here the port range has to be given or the port number has to be given. What is the port number that we are looking for? 80. Okay, just type 80. And here you can see source. So in sources, we have three different things. One is called as custom. Second one is called as my IP. The third one is called as anywhere. Let me show you that. Click on here, custom anywhere my ip now what is the difference between all these three so these two are all same because just the ip address gets changed nothing much the type of ip address gets changed right so custom let's say when you give custom what will happen is you should give the ip ip address of any system suppose let's say you and one of your colleague are working now you want to give the access to your colleague only not to you but just to your colleague now, what you have to do, you have to ask the IP address of his system or IP address of your colleague system. Now, that IP address you have to enter here. Now, once you enter the IP address of that system, then whoever is logging in from that system, they all will be able to access the instance. Okay, they all will be able to access the instance. Again, remember, if they want to access the instance, 
they should have the public IP. Without public IP, they will not be able to access. But here, what we are defining, we are defining who can access our instance or who can access the data inside our instance. That's called as custom. And the second one is called as my IP. Now, when you select my IP, what will happen? Automatically, it will detect the IP address of my system. Okay, you can see IP address of my network, not just the system, it's called as network. So it is detecting the IP address of my network. Now, whenever I log in from the network, whichever I have connected now, only then I will be able to see the instance or the data inside the instance. That's called as my IP. And the last option is called as anywhere. Anywhere IPv4, IPv6. These are the two types of IP addresses. That's another thing. So let me go with anywhere. You can select anyone, no problem. If you give anywhere, what will happen is anybody with the IP address will be able to access the data inside the instance. Okay, anybody with the IP address of my instance will be able to access the data inside our instance. So let, it, let me keep it as anywhere only so that I'll post the IP address in the chat box. You can also able, you can also, sh you should also see the data inside the instance. Right, I'll show you that. So let me give it as anyway and then click on save rules. Once you click on save rules, go back to previous page, whichever we are seeing this, this site can't be reached. And now just to reload the page. So just click on reload the page and we will see the Apache, Apache home page. Or let me just give that. We reload it. It is taking some time. Do one thing. I'll just select the instance public IP and then paste the public IP of your of the instance. Meanwhile, what I'll do is it, it takes some time. I mean, it should come immediately. I'll just do one thing. I'll just keep the IP address in the chat box so that you can access the IP address. Just click on the IP address. You should see the Apache server homepage. Okay, you should see the Apache server homepage. Let me, I mean, you can try and let me know. I mean, you can unmute and let me know so that uh, I'll get to know whether you are also able to access the type or not. I mean, the Apache homepage or not. So I have connected to a private network. So that's why it is not showing. So for you, it must be showing. So can anybody check and confirm, confirm me that? I am in my, I am in a private network, so that's why it's not showing. But for you, it should show if you are able to access. Can anybody uh, click on that IP address and then let me know whether you are able to see the Apache homepage or not? I have posted that IP address in the chat box. Can anybody respond with that? Yeah, Rajiv, uh, Rajiv Kumar, uh, are, are you able to access it? I, I'm trying, sir. Yeah, uh, Just copy and paste the IP address in Google. You should see the Apache server homepage. Anybody else has tried? Uh, okay, Suresh has mentioned that it's not working. So let me just check with that. Security in the security group, I have opened the port number 80 or not. I have given the port number 80 and it should work now. Let me do one thing. I'll just edit the security group. Uh, I mean, I should, I, I'll keep it as 80 only, but I'll do one thing. Drop that. Let's change it to anywhere. And then here, I'll just give it as all traffic. Click on save rules. Now 
now can you try sir anybody not working just just a minute sir i have just uh, configured it but uh, it takes some time maybe one or two minutes we have to wait just a minute Let me check whether it is actually the public at least failed to describe so yeah it, here it comes there uh, no sir here actually the error message is appearing here failed to describe security groups so that could be the problem let me just work with that okay. security security groups edit in bond rules let me delete this one Get uh, add rule custom TCP related key port number 80 ports anywhere and then click on save links. I have successfully modified that. Let me go to instances, reload it. So select the instance, copy the public IP. Let me go to a new tab. And paste it. Okay, I'll do one thing. Uh, I have just installed the software. I mean, like I forgot this one, so it's not actually the error of anything. So I have installed the Apache server, but I have not started it. So we have to start it. I, I just forgot that one. So let me start the Apache server. So how to start the Apache server? Service. Okay, let me type this one. Service. I hope you are able to see the. Mobile XM page. So service HTTPD start. I thought I have started, so I have not started actually. So just click enter. Now the service has got started. And if I go to my browser and if I reload, now I should see the HTTPD page, the Apache server page. Now can you see the Apache server page has got started? So I have not started earlier. That's why that was that error was coming. So now you should also be able to access the Apache server page. Right, so I'm getting response from the in the chat box also. They are also able to access. Now, what I want is I don't want to see this default page. Okay, this is basically the default page that will come when you access or when you install the Apache server. Now, what I want is I want to keep my own data into my instance. Okay, I want to keep my own data into my instance. That's our next step. So we are trying to access the instance and we will see the error message by default. Any website is running on port number 80. So we have configured the port number 80 and then I have started the HTTPD service. Once you start the HTTPD service, what we are going to do next is we are going to keep a simple data inside the instance. Now, how will you keep a simple data inside an instance? Just a simple index.html file I'm going to do. So how to do that? First, let me clear the screen. I hope you are able to see the mobile XM screen. Right. So now here we have to execute a couple of commands. So let me execute these commands. CD, CD space. CD is nothing but change directory. So I hope, I mean, those who are into computer science, they'll be knowing. So CD slash var, var is a path, www is a path again, and I'm trying to go to HTML page or HTML path. So let me click enter. And here, what I'll do is I'll just create one index.html page, a simple HTML page I'm going to create. Now, in order to create the index.html page, we have a command which is called as a VIM. Okay, in order to create an HTML page, we have a command which is called as a VIM, VIM space index.html. Whatever the HTML page that you want to create, just give the name of the HTML page. So I'm just creating an HTML page with this link, with this name called index.html. Right. Once you do that, just click enter. Okay. Once you do that, just click enter. 
Now you can keep whatever data that you want inside this HTML page. Okay, inside this HTML index.html page, you can keep whatever data that you have. If you have any script or if you have any HTML scripts or HTML pipeline scripts, or whatever that you have, you can just keep that data here. And once you do this one, you will be able to access it. Right. So now the question is how will you keep the data inside this instance? Now, in order to keep the data inside the instance, we have to press the character I on keyboard. Okay, we have to press the character I on keyboard. So once you press the character I on keyboard, what will happen is you will go into the insert mode. Currently, you can see index.html at the bottom of the page. Now, I will just press I so that you will not see this index.html. Instead, you will see the insert. Let me do that. I'm just pressing character I or key I on my keyboard. Right now, can you see insert? Now what it is telling now you can write whatever the data that you want here. OK, now you can write whatever the data that you want. Let me do one thing. I'll just write a simple data. Welcome to one week workshop. So welcome to one week workshop on Amazon Web Services. So I'm just writing this data. OK, right. So now let's say this is the simple line that I want to see once I execute or once I reload this page. OK, I don't want to see this custom page. I mean the default page. I want to see my own data that I'm going to keep inside the instance, right? Once you type the data, be it any number of lines, that doesn't matter. Once you type the data, then press escape. OK, press escape and then you at the bottom, you see bottom of the screen you should observe. Q colon WQ. What does WQ represents is W represents write, Q represents quit. It's basically to save that to save this data and come out of this one. That is what we are trying to tell here. Okay, save the data, whatever I have written, and then quit out of this index.html file. Which is called as colon WQ. Then let me click enter. Right. Now we have kept the data inside the instance. Okay, we have kept the data inside the instance. Now let me go to the browser. Those who are all able to access the browser, I mean with the IP address, just reload that page. Okay, I'm just reloading that page and we will see welcome to one week workshop on Amazon Web Services. Are we able to access the data that is available inside the instance? Yes. Even you also, you can just click on the IP address that is available. You should also see the same thing. Which is welcome to one week workshop on Amazon Web Services. Now, why you are all seeing? I am seeing that's fine because I'm working, I'm creating my own instance and I'm working on my laptop. But why you are all seeing? The reason is we have opened the port number 80. Okay, we have opened port number 80. When you want your website to be visible for public, then it is mandatory to open port number 80. If you don't open port number 80, then Nobody will access your website except you. OK, but whenever we create a website, what is our intention? Our okay. intention is to reach public. So if you are creating a website, your website should go into the public. If you are creating just for yourself, then there is no point in point in creating the website. So that's the reason why we have opened port number 80. Now, suppose let's say I want to edit this data. I don't want to see this one. I want to see some other data. I, I want to keep some other data. Now, how will you do that? So again, go to mobile system in which file we have kept in the index.html file. So go to the index.html file. How will you go? VIM space index.html and then click enter. Now you can see the data, whatever you have kept. Now I want to, I don't want to see this data. I want to keep a new data. So first what we have to do, we have to go to the insert mode. At the bottom you can see it is showing index.html. We should not see this one. We should see insert. How will you go to the insert mode? Just press I on your keyboard. OK, just press I on your keyboard. And now you are in the insert mode. Now delete everything, the whatever you have written, or you can also write it in the next line. So currently what I'll do is I'll just delete it. Okay, I'll just delete this one. So now what I'll do is I'll just write some other data. So will you do offered internship training? Internship training on AWS. Now let me write this data. So right, and then press escape and then Q colon WQ. That means write and quit or save and quit. Let me click enter. 
now what should i see i should see the civil edu offers internship training if i reload this page you should automatically see the updated data right can you see even you would, you will also able to see that you just reload the page and you will see the updated data i hope you are also able to see this one the updated one right so that's how you can insert the data into the instance and you can access the data inside the instance so that is all about this particular session how to launch an ec2 instance and how to connect to the ec2 instance and then how to insert the data into the ec2 instance and how to see the data that is available inside an instance this is what usually happens uh, for any website so if i am accessing this aws website what does that mean it means the port number 80 is open for this website and hence i am accessing this one if port number is uh, port number 80 is not open then i'll not be able to access this website so that's where we are able to see this one now suppose let's say i'll go to security groups and in the security groups if i delete the security group rule okay we have this uh, port number 80 right if i delete this one what will happen you will not be able to access this one even i am also be, not be able to access why i will not be able to access it's because i am accessing this ip address outside of aws console Whenever you are accessing anything outside of your AWS console, we will not see that until or unless if you give the permission. If you don't give the permission, then it's not possible to access. Right. So now, once after your work gets completed, one most important thing that you have to do is you have to terminate your instance. That means you have to completely shut down your instance. That's called as termination process. Now, how to terminate an instance? So select that instance, whichever you want to terminate, and you can see instance state. OK, there is an option called instance state. Just click on instance state, and here you can see three options. Stop instance, reboot instance, terminate instance. Now what will happen when you stop the instance? You will see like this. The status should be like this. The status will be like this, stopped. Now whenever an instance, suppose let's say you, I want to stop this instance for today let's say uh, six o'clock you come you came out the, or you have to come out of the office now what will you do but you want to use this instance in tomorrow's uh, work also let's say you want to use this instance for let's say for the next two months now what will you do will you will you launch an instance every day and then will you keep the data inside the instance every day no it consumes our time instead of that what you can do is you can stop this instance now what will happen when you stop the instance whatever the data that is available in the instance that data will not be able to access you will not access you will not be able to access the data why my instance is stopped when a server is stopped you cannot access that server what does it mean by when you cannot access the server it means you cannot access the data inside the server so that's called a stop okay when we will use stop when you want to work with the same instance for a longer duration of time and you want to avoid the building Okay, if you run the instance for 24 by 7, then you will be billed. You will be charged. Obviously, you will go beyond 750 hertz and you will be charged. So you don't want to get charged. And at the same time, you don't want to lose your data that is available in the instance. In that case, we can stop the instance. Once when you stop the instance, tomorrow when you come or after some time when you want to restart, you can just click on restart the instance. Let me show you that option. I have already stopped one instance. You can see three instances are there which are stopped. Select that instance. Now I want to stop this in, start this instance or restart this instance. Select the instance, instance state, and you can see the option as a start instance. Once you click on start instance, what will happen? Actually, it is getting failed, so that's not a problem here because I have given some additional security features here because this instance was accessible for other people. So that's why I have given that uh, feature. Right. So once you select that instance, just click on instance state and start so that the instance will get restarted. Right. So currently, I'll just select this one. And now the second option is a reboot instance. Reboot means we know the process of rebooting. Even the laptop also will get rebooted once in a while. So that's reboot process we know. And then terminate instance. Terminate means what will happen? This entire instance will completely get shut down and it will no longer be available. The data inside that instance will not be available and the instance itself will not be available. So you should be very careful 
which instance you have to terminate, when you want to terminate, whether the work is completed with that instance or not. You have to be very careful in deciding that. So now my work is completed with this instance. Now let me terminate the instance. So just select that instance, instance state, and then click on terminate, and it is asking for the confirmation. Just click on terminate. Now what will happen? You can see successfully terminated. You can see the status as shutting down. The instance is shutting down. Now after some time, you will not see this instance also. If you refresh that page, you will not see that instance also. It will be completely terminated. So now the state is shutting down. Once it completely got shut down, you will see it as terminated. Let me show you that. So just reload the page. After some time, you should see it as terminated. And once you log out and log in back to the in, log in back to the AWS, you will not see this instance also. Okay, you can see what is the state of the instance terminated. That means now if anybody is having the IP address, you just reload the page, you will not see anything. You will see this site can't be reached. You can just give it a try if you want. You will not see that, but that's for sure. So that's all about this particular session. In the next session, we are going to talk about another concept that is available in EC2, which is called as AMI. Okay, AMI and auto scaling, we'll see. So that's from my end. If you have any doubts, you can unmute and ask the doubts. Thank you. Uh, sir, what is the command to install uh, Apache server? M install HTTPD hyphen Y. Uh, I'll just give that command uh, in the in the WhatsApp group. You can, uh, if you want, you can.